Hi, I'm Meg from Cook with Meg, and this video series is all about food basics, pantry basics, knife safety, food safety, and cleaning. And in this particular video, we are talking about food safety, and more importantly, time and temperature and getting things packed away and properly stored away so that you can enjoy them longer than the day that you brought them home from the store or the day that you cook them. Let's go, let's begin. All right, so I've got a few items kind of willy nilly all over the counter because what I wanted to do was to show you real life and real situations. So let's start with, let's move a couple of these out of the way. Let's start with what's sitting on my counter. Traditionally, you would not find a half eaten or cut apple open laying on the counter. You wouldn't find a pile of celery cut and laying on the counter. And you probably wouldn't see just a container of open fruit with bananas. And I did this on purpose because I wanted to talk a little bit about food safety and how we can be more careful in the kitchen so that we don't get sick or contaminate surfaces or food and then eat them and then pay for it. So in a previous video, we talked knife safety and I moved everything kind of over here to show you that I would finish prepping my food and I would need to pack it all away if it wasn't being used or eaten right away. So the first rule of thumb is probably don't put things directly onto your countertop. I would prefer to see things on a board or in a bowl. So I've got this little handy tool that we call a bench scraper, it helps you kind of gather items up. So if you are cooking or prepping as we call it, I would prefer to see something on a board. So that's not to say that we never put things directly on our counter. We do if we're making bread or moving things around, but it's just an extra la layer, an extra added layer of protection for you. You will definitely see my dog Oliver. He loves vegetables and fruits. It's not for puppies. So cutting board, Stuff on the cutting board, great. That's what we like to see if we're in the middle of prepping or cooking. Now, having said that, let's say we prepped all this celery, but we didn't need it right away. So we wanna make sure that we are storing it properly so that nothing uh, goes to waste. So I've got these little glass dishes. I really like the glass dishes because they're glass they are definitely reusable. I would pop in vegetables. If you want to get stuff prepped for snacks, after school snacks, etc. These are really great to have. So these bowls, it can just hang out and live in the fridge. Maybe my apple, only a part of it got used. Now you will see that it will brown a little bit. That's called oxidation. So maybe we just take a little bit of plastic wrap and we wrap up the apple in a bit of plastic wrap and pop that back into the fridge. You could also give it a little bit of a chop using all your skills that you may have just learned, but we'll wrap that up and get that into the fridge. We have other containers that work great. So these little disposable containers. These ones you can use a few times. I mean, these can go in the microwave, they can go in the dishwasher. Over time, they do get a little bit warped and they do pick up the odor and smells of things. So I find that if I've made a big batch of chili or stew or things that have tomato, the tomato kind of seeps into the plastic, which isn't terrible but it's hard to get them really, really super clean. One little trick actually, I learned somewhere, I can't remember where it was, but they took cooking spray, like nonstick spray, and they gave these plastic containers a spritz first, then they put the leftover chili or soup in it, 
and it provided a little bit of a greasy barrier so that it didn't discolor the container as much. But I find that over time, you do have to get rid of these guys that you can't keep them for a long, long time. So totally up to you. All right, I'm back with more items to show you. So cutting board into the sink for now. We're talking about food storage and getting things cooked and prepped and then put away in such a way that they stay nice and fresh and we get to enjoy them over and over until they're gone. So apple, as an example, I probably very rarely put an apple in the fridge, meaning I eat the whole apple, but if you did have a piece, maybe you only needed a little bit for salad and you don't throw it away, wrap it up. You can also use bags, so just plastic bags. We like to keep these in our house. We've got the snack size, the sandwich size, the medium freezer, the large freezer. So again, I mean, it's options. Uh, you saw this press and seal, which is the same as like a stretch and seal. So again, just a plastic wrap. Tin foil is a great one to have on hand all things that help in the storage solution world. Now, this container, you saw the glass container right here. You saw the plastic container. Here is another plastic container, also by the same brand, and it's a really good one because it's got like a big suction, suction seal. Like this one could hold liquids even. It's really, really good. And I do really enjoy this one and these go in the dishwasher as well. So maybe we were taking some berries and we wanted the berries to last, honestly, even a little bit longer than they would just wrapped with some plastic wrap. So if you have a couple of these really good containers, it is wonderful for storage. So pop that in, pop the lid on and they come in different sizes and then stack them and into the fridge. So my rule of thumb, when I get home from getting groceries or when I finish cooking food, I always look at what's leftover, i.e. the word leftovers, and we figure out how we are going to parcel it up and get it put into the fridge. And the key here is if you are putting something into the fridge, be mindful of it the next day so that we're using what gets put away. So right now I'm looking here to my left, banana, strawberry, apple, celery. All right, we've got snacks ready to go for tomorrow. Maybe we made a stir fry. Maybe we had meatloaf and mashed potatoes and you have enough for one person to eat lunch tomorrow grab that container, make up your one little meal. Maybe you're a meal planner or a meal prepper and you've got these dishes so that you know, or maybe you're working late, but you need to have dinner ready for the kids the next day. They can go and grab out of the fridge a meal that's ready to go, pop it into the microwave if you've got one um, or reheat it and they are good to go. So food storage containers are a really important thing. They're a good investment. So if you're looking at containers, this would be the lower end of the scale. This would be mid range, but you can get all of this stuff at dollar store. And then this one, these are a little more expensive and I think you can get them on Amazon. You can get them at different places, but it comes in a set and these last the longest. Uh, we have had these for five plus years. Like they're really, really, really good. So storage containers, shorter term solution for food storage would be things like cling wrap, stretch wrap, foil, bags. These are good if we're prepping things for the freezer. We love storage bags to put things into the freezer. So let's say I brought home or grew beautiful berries and I know berries are not going to cut it for more than a day or two in the fridge. So maybe we package those up and we put them into bags and we get them into the freezer. We like to do a lot of fill the freezer. Maybe it's a meal that you've made. You've made a big shepherd's pie and you put it into little foil pans. 
they get covered up, written on the top, what it is and the date you made it into the freezer. So freezer meals are a really big thing. Freezer snacks, freezer meals. Having items that are prepped and ready to go. Aside from this big piece of celery that you can see, look at all that celery that we diced up. This could be in a freezer bag in the freezer along with carrot and broccoli and other veggies to know that if this were a night where we wanted to do a stir fry or mixed vegetables, we've got lots of stuff ready and waiting and properly stored in the freezer or short term in the fridge. The last thing that I really wanna talk about when it comes to food storage and food safety would be temperatures, timing and temperatures. So this is an instant read thermometer that immediately gives me the temperature that it's detecting. And if I were to put my hand on it, it's reading that my hand is giving 88, 89 Fahrenheit, 89 degrees, 90 Fahrenheit. So that's an instant read thermometer. When we are cooking, and that would be specifically like if we were cooking ground beef, beef, chicken, pork, fish, breads even to some extent, we often are given a temperature of an internal temperature that is the safe zone for foods. So when we look at things like chicken, we always want the internal temperature to be at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit for it to be safe to consume. So what I encourage you to do is to learn all of those base temperatures. Beef, obviously, you can eat raw, tartar, you can have mooing, you can have blue rare, which is literally cooked for 30 seconds on each, each side, you can eat very rare, medium rare, medium well, medium, medium well, and well done. So that's for beef. But when it comes to chicken and pork, and more specifically chicken, no go if it's below 165. You want white. You want the juices to run clear. You need it to be a specific temperature. So if you are able to get a thermometer, whatever kind of thermometer, for meats, it needs to be one that can pierce into. That is such a good kitchen tool to have because it will give you an accurate read and know that you and your family will be staying safe. So a thermometer is good for food safety. When it comes to timing and temperatures, really read through your recipes, really learn those visual cues. If it's a cake, you want it to spring up and be nice and puffy. You want to put something down in the center and pull that something out and see if it's coming out gummy. If the batter of your cake is still stuck to that toothpick, what does that tell us? We know it needs more time. So timing is not just because we want something to look good and we want something to, to, to be or appear finished. We physically need it to be well cooked so that we don't get sick. So cooking things at the proper temperature for the proper amount of time is really important. Having a tool in the kitchen to help you discover what that is, is a good one. Your oven, some ovens might even have a temperature sensor, which would be cool. Um, the other thing is getting things into the fridge after we've eaten them. So let's say I made a big pot of rice and some meatloaf or a stir fry. What do we not want to see happen is for that to sit out on the counter or the top of the stove for hours and hours and hours after we eat it. The rule of thumb is it's got to be put away within a couple hours, like big time. In the summer, even quicker. Food spoilage, right? things that are cream-based or egg-based or mayonnaise, like any of those things absolutely need refrigeration. And the thing that we often miss is we assume, sure, mayonnaise needs to go into the fridge and cream stuff needs to go back into the fridge. But what you don't think of are things like rice. And rice, if it takes too long to cool down, can actually develop bacteria that's harmful. So get those leftovers packed up get them into the fridge. If we bring groceries home or we bring food home, get those, the lettuce, 
prepped and washed and put into containers and into the fridge. Um, rinse off some of the stuff that might be a little dirty and get it into the fridge. Prepare your food before it goes into the fridge, just like we would prepare food before we go into the oven. And then when it comes out of the oven, we still have that responsibility to get it back into the fridge to keep it at the optimal temperature so that we can avoid getting sick from eating stuff that may have sat out too long. So a lot of information in this video about food storage and food safety. We could go much deeper, uh, but for now, you know your basics, and I think it's just a really good rule of thumb to stay safe in the kitchen, not only from a prep standpoint, from a during cooking standpoint, but from an after we eat standpoint as well. For more with me, cookwithmeg.com. Hope to see you again really soon in the kitchen. And always remember, we are awesome. Thanks, everyone.